previous class uh, we said about uh, uh, blanching and uh, pasteurization and its effectiveness etcetera. And there if you remember we had said that uh, term called temperature quotient is very very applicable and uh, today we will discuss more on that and uh, see how how effective this can give you some application. Okay. Though quickly uh, in that previous class we could not finish that uh, some processes like called canning or apparatization where high temperature is being used for right to to not only destroy that uh, pathogens but also many organisms right so here we come to that what is the call term called temperature quotient right and uh, and uh, this why it is coming because uh, earlier we had been dealing with uh, we said that high temperature was applied. Now, if it is low temperature why the difference will be there right. So, to understand that if we understand a term called temperature quotient or Q 10 right that is called temperature quotient let me write here also. Uh, this is Q 10 is known as temperature quotient right. So, this temperature quotient is defined as K T plus 10 over K T right, where K is the reaction rate, K is the reaction rate. You remember in earlier some class which also said that all whether we are dealing with food right whether we are consuming or processing in any cases uh, in many cases things are associated with biochemical reactions right and that is not under the purview of this course but to have some test to have some idea about that will as and when required will bring also into it uh, so that we 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 feel that where it is needed right. Now, this temperature quotient Q 10 is K T plus 10 over K T that is K is the rate of reaction and this reaction can be as we said earlier also that any reaction like chemical reaction, uh, biochemical reaction, microbial reaction, enzymatic reaction any kind of reactions is uh, generally following this straightforward relationship that temperature quotient Q 10. So, uh, this physically means that if you increase the temperature by 10 degree then the rates of reaction is double or if you decrease the temperature by 10 degree the rates of reaction is halved. Say if we take the room temperature say 30 degree and if we increase the temperature by 10 degree then temperature then the rates of reaction which was at 30 degree will be doubled at 40 degree. Similarly, if we decrease the temperature by 10 degree then the rates of reaction which were uh, at 30 degree will be half at 20 degree right. So, this gives us idea why the application of high temperature is detrimental to the food or is bad for the food whether you are processing or whether whatever you are doing in terms of quality in terms of quality in all aspects right in all aspects of quality its appearance its color its flavor its nutritive value everything put together and uh, this is uh, bad whereas, if we lower the temperature then the retention of color, retention of flavor, retention of uh, nutritive value everything will be better than what it was at higher temperature right. So, Q 
ten is so much then associated with all the processes, right? So without a doubt, we can say that without a doubt, the most important factor affecting post harvest life is the temperature, and this is because temperature has a profound effect on the rates of the biological reactions for example, metabolism or respiration. The other day perhaps I also had said you that uh, you are respiring every now and then for that also you need some material and that was the glucose perhaps we will come to that, but let us go quickly otherwise our time gets away. Okay. So, so, this is over the physical range of most crops that is 0 to 30 degrees centigrade increase. So, over the physical range of most crops that is 0 to 30 degrees centigrade this is the same temperature uh, range increased temperature causes an exponential rise in respiration. The Van Tuff rule states that the velocity of a biological reaction increases twice or thrice or two times or three times right for every 10 degree rise in temperature. Typically we can say that Q 10 for the growth of the organisms is 1.5, Q 10 for imbibations is around say 1.5 to 1.8. Is uh, for imbibations is 1.5 to 1.8, Q10 for photosynthesis is around 2.1 to 2.5, and Q10 for respiration is around 2 to 3, right? So it is around 2 to 3. So the thing which we said that 2 to 3 times 2 to 3 folds then is coming correct. This is a uh, general this is the general figure right in absolute in particular case this may vary this may differ but this gives idea that what could be if imbibation or photosynthesis or growth of the organisms or respiration is concerned what could be the corresponding temperature question values right let us then look into this photosynthesis So, right from our childhood we have come across this uh, thing photosynthesis right, where uh, this uh, trees uh, they are uh, using uh, light uh, daylight and uh, sunlight rather and using carbon dioxide to produce their uh, to produce their uh, nutrient right. So, from this water plus carbon dioxide it comes to that we get oxygen and 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 uh, C6H2O6 that is glucose, right? So this is a general equation, right? The way it is written that H2O plus uh, CO2 that will come to O2 plus uh, C6H2O6 in chemistry it sounds very good that okay so easily it can be made right but in actual it is not some hints we have given here you see this undergoes a cycle typically known as kelvin cycle right this undergoes typically a cycle called kelvin cycle and just to show you that how difficult or how uh, they are complicated the cycles are and this is called biochemical cycle. The other day I also gave asked you that uh, the other day I also told you that uh, 
for biochemistry you go to a book called Leninzer right that is uh, spelling Leninzer L E N I N Z E R on book on biochemistry. If you see that then you can come across that what different types of biochemical reactions are responsible for many many things which we undergo right. So, whether it is metabolism or any other so that will be very much required. I just have given here one example that we will be doing here this Kelvin cycle how difficult it is you see here though our schematic diagram showed it was so easy, but here you see we are we are making such a, a complicated cycle through which uh, we are ultimately uh, we are getting back this uh, uh, from um, uh, carbon dioxide and water to this uh, your uh, oxygen and uh, and glucose right so and not only that not only this uh, some other other um, things also i'll try to show that uh, how difficult or how complicated they are for example this was kelvin cycle this is the respiration cycle and here you see Here you see this is respiration cycle. So, we are taking we are taking uh, carbohydrates say sugars right coming to glucose and then this glucose on glycolysis they are give, making some uh, energy ATPs etcetera coming to pyruvic acid then acetyl CoA and it is undergoing to Krebs cycle right. So, that Krebs cycle uh, how difficult how complicated this is I would like to show you here also and this is if we are taking carbohydrate the other day I gave you an example if you remember that uh, if somebody is fed with uh, only fat or only protein or only carbohydrate whether he will survive or not because for our respiration here also here we see that the basic is glucose from glucose we are getting this energy and we are respiring right. So, oxygen is required oxygen and glucose we are releasing carbon dioxide water and we are getting a lot of energy right. So, in the in that question we had said whether people will be surviving if somebody is only fed with carbohydrate or with fat or with protein. So, here we see that we started with uh, we started with uh, this carbohydrate coming to that Krebs cycle, we started with fat we are coming to that Krebs cycle, we started with proteins through amino acids we are coming back to the Krebs cycle everywhere this cycle is producing carbon dioxide and energy and you are also taking some oxygen right. So, there are glycolysis of course, glycolysis is that uh, when you are utilizing uh, glucose for conversion of that glucose into other glucose that is called glycolysis that does not depend whether it is aerobic or anaerobic glycolysis can happen in both aerobic and anaerobic because that creates the basic that is the glucose. So, once you have that then you it undergoes the cycle it undergoes that formation of carbon dioxide and uh, energy right. 
So, let us look into that that uh, glucose. So, he has small energy sorry here small energy is uh, obtained during glycolysis right and then through pyruvate here it is either it is undergoing anaerobic. So, their fermentation lactic acid ethanol is being produced or through oxidative where through Krebs Krebs cycle we are getting ultimately energy carbon dioxide and and water right. So, the basic is glucose. So, everywhere as in the previous we have shown that if it is fat or if it is uh, protein right if it is fat or if it is protein then all are getting converted into glucose and then that is being utilized for the respiration cycle right and here this is a typical Krebs cycle which is also known as citric acid cycle right which is also known as citric acid cycle and and you see from pyruvate it is so acetyl coa citrate then cis as he uh, a uh, uh, aconitate rather or uh, D isocitrate alpha keto uh, keto glutarate or succinyl coa succinate uh, then uh, fumarate or malate then oxaloacetate. So, this cycle is going on and every every cases either releasing or giving some energy or taking oxygen right. So, that and releasing carbon dioxide and uh, water. So, depending on what you are taking your respiration cycle is happening. Of course, here again I repeat that during respiration it is aerobic respiration. If it is anaerobic respiration then we come to this level and where we get this ethanol or maybe lactic acid or many other means some acids or ketones or aldehydes are being produced. For example, when you, 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 you run for a long time, when you are running for a long time then you in many cases you have observed that you are getting some pain uh, typical typical pain on the legs and others right and that is primarily because your your body was requiring lot of oxygen which is not getting you are not supplying that oxygen or, or oxygen is not available. So, that is why it underwent two anaerobic path and that produced this uh, acids or ketones or aldehydes which are not desirable, but if it is going through the oxidative path then it will produce carbon dioxide, water and lot of energy. My intention is that how complicated things are, how complicated the cycles are it that to give you some uh, idea I, I just highlighted these two cycles and this two is some 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 uh, I, I can say as example for for bringing your uh, inquisitiveness into this uh, biochemical also right biochemical is altogether different than chemical and it is much more complicated keep in mind okay now let us go into some these of course, we have said chill storage and other I am not uh, much in favor of this that again uh, this is ok some definition 0 to 5 degree centigrade 0 to 5 degree centigrade is there and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, that is the called chill storage and where cyclotrops can grow this is cyclotrops can grow relatively slowly for example, 
generation time for pseudomonas available in fish is around 68 hours around 5 degree centigrade uh, compared to 26 hours at 0 degree centigrade. So, that uh, chill storage is, uh, is good for that, chill storage is good for that we are getting, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are slowing down the microbial activities as example we have given pseudomonas that is available in fresh fish is uh, growing up in 6 to 8 hours at 5 degree centigrade whereas at 0 degree centigrade it takes around more than one day 26 27 hours right so the lower the temperature then better the product is that q10 is coming directly here right so as the temperature is lowered the plasma membrane of the organism undergoes phase transition from liquid crystalline to the gel in which transportation of solutes is extremely difficult that is why they are not surviving. And mesophils, I hope sacrophil, mesophil, uh, this we understand, thermophil, thermophil is at high temperature organisms, mesophil is medium temperature organisms and sacrophils are low temperature organisms for their production activity all right. So, they love they those who love at high temperature are called thermophilic those who are loving at low temperature called sacrophilic ok. So, mesophils can grow at chilling temperature, but not necessarily get killed right. This cannot mesophils cannot grow at uh, at uh, chilling temperature, but not, not necessarily be killed right. This is a typing mistake. So, it should be cunt. Certain psychotropes such as pseudomonas do grow and cause also food poisoning at relatively low temperature. So, I, I said in the beginning that uh, this is general not in particular. So, that uh, pseudomonas is a typical example which uh, can cause uh, some um, uh, bad and uh, food poisoning may occur right. This I am giving as as example right example in the sense that this is the typical uh, uh, away from the normal right. Then we come to another that is called moisture loss, right. You remember in the previous class uh, we said that there are many ways of uh, preserving food material that uh, moisture loss is one such that is drying. So, by, by that is the major problem is moisture. Moisture is the primary problem of the food material to keep for longer time or preserve it for long time because that uh, several types of uh, packaging are also now, nowadays come up and, uh, and, and, and that helps in, in, in maintaining that moisture. So, moisture is uh, primary, uh, primary enemy for the food because the higher the moisture level more it is vulnerable for changes right. So, the lower the moisture level um, better is the quality, better is the retention, better is the life of the food material. I gave two examples one, one with high, high moisture content food material right say uh, fish, meat, they are all perishable, right. But uh, low moisture that is powdered uh, baby powder or milk powder, so they are at very low temperature, low, low, low moisture content. So, low moisture material do survive for a longer period, right or do. So, in that case large pieces of meat are often packed in plastic bags 
or sprayed with various moisture resistant coatings and uh, eggs are coated with edible oil which sells the minute pores of the egg cells. Beefs aging at 95 percent are age for several weeks at 2 degrees centigrade with ultraviolet rays. So, these are typical some example of high moisture or, or the moisture problem right. So, so, in that another thing which comes in is the freezing right in the low temperature there is the freezing if we lower the temperature and freeze it then uh, we have just said that the rates of reaction comes down drastically depending on how far you are going right that example also you will be giving how far you are going in terms of temperature this is not only processing but also the storage right so when you are making it then uh, this will be the method will be beyond the purview of this class because uh, that is another technique either drying or freezing these are different techniques they have different engineering processes which uh, is beyond the purview of this class. But to have some idea we will say that freezing you can differentiate that if keep you keep one 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 small uh, a small bucket of uh, water in your household refrigerator, you will see that it will take uh, maybe several hours to freeze depending on the size and the container. If you keep in plastic container, then it will take much longer time than if you keep it in some metallic container, right. So, depending on that, it may be varying, but time requirement is very high. Whereas, if you have uh, seen say cryo liquid like liquid nitrogen, you can freeze it instantly almost in no time, maybe in terms of seconds or in terms of minutes, right. And in both the process, uh, your size of the ice crystals, number of the ice crystals they are being produced, they are also are quite different. In some case, in the former case, that is when you are keeping in the household refrigerator the size of the ice crystal is very high number is very low so the cell damage and other losses are very high whereas if you would have done that thing the same thing in like nitrogen then that would have been much much better and you could have done a lot in that uh, in, in the sense the size of the crystals are very very small number of ice crystals are very high. So, to make that uh, comparison I have given that when you are storing cauliflower at around minus 18 degree centigrade or minus 12 or minus 7 you see the storage time is 12 month for cauliflower 27 month for chicken that means depending on what product you are taking time temperature period all are getting different at minus 12 it is minus 2.5 months or 15 months and minus 10 or 8 uh, uh, minus 7 degrees centigrade it is 10 months or 8 months right. So, if you look at this is a typical uh, different time temperature combination for storage right I just gave an example ok I am not discussing this then uh, before this I think there was one uh, no ok ok so that means when we are talking about that the uh, temperature is one of the primary consideration where your uh, freezing uh, or that is below freezing or above freezing that is a primary concern as well as well at what temperature you are keeping right. So, this will dictate you 
how long you can keep your material uh, under good condition right so we stop it here thank you